Jesus Christ, make this a temple of your presence and a house of prayer. Be always near us when we seek you in this place. Draw us to yourself when we come to you alone and when we come with others to find comfort and wisdom, to, su to be supported and strengthened, to rejoice and give thanks. May it be here, Lord Christ, that we are made one with you and with one another, so that our lives are sustained and sanctified for your service, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Spirit, open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts, that we may grow closer to you through joy and through suffering. Be with us in the fullness of your power, as new members are added to your household, as we grow in grace through the years, when we are joined in marriage, when we turn to you in sickness or special need, and at the last, when we are committed into the Father's hands, this we pray for Christ's sake. sound has gone out into all the lands and, and their message to the ends of the world. world. I call to you, my people. To, to you, O oh God, we lift our hearts in praise, and to you shall we pray. Grant, O oh, merciful Father, that in this generation and in those that are to come, its voice 
may continually call your people to praise and worship through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We dedicate this bare fruit in the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the, the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus Christ, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. And through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant by the power of your Holy Spirit that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
dedicate his choir store. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
we are dedicating the altar is a place of covenant the altar is a place of sacrifice altar fights altar speaks it's a place of intercession and we thank God of our faith, the captain of our salvation, our hope, has passed through the heavens into the very sanctuary, into the very altar, in the presence of God, interceding for us. Stretch out your hand, let us pray.
that through him we might become the sons, your sons and daughters. Lord God, hear us. Amen. Sanctify this table Amen. dedicated to you. Amen. Let it be to us a sign of the heavenly order Amen. where your saints and angels praise you forever. Amen. Accept here the continual recalling of the sacrifice of your son Jesus Christ. Amen. Grant that all who eat and drink at this holy table may be fed and be refreshed by his body and blood. Amen. Be forgiven of their sins. Amen. Be united with one another. Amen. And be strengthened for your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we dedicate this holy table in the name of God the Father. It is my honor and privilege to read the provisions of the deed of dedication on behalf of the Archbishop Metropolitan of Private of all Nigeria, Anglican Communion, and Bishop of the Diocese of Abuja. Whereas the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, the leadership of the entire Bishop, Archbishop T. O. Rufusei decided to create the said geographical area of federal capital territory into the diocese to be named the Diocese of Abuja. And whereas in pursuance of this objective, the Bishop of Kaduna, the White Reverend Titus Oyomi, was asked to supervise the work of the diocese. And whereas the rapid growth work with evangelism which moved satisfactorily in peace and bounds in the same areas. The standing committee of the province of the Church of Nigeria and the Communion passed a motion at its meeting of 12 September 1989. The federal capital territory of Asia be constituted into an autonomous diocese. And where is the need for a permanent site the first church in the diocese of Abuja Anglican Communion became paramount, notably in the increase in the size of the congregation of the church. Consequently, a formal place of worship was built, dedicated to the glory of God on Sunday, 6th of November 1988, by His Grace, the Most Reverend Joseph Ayodun Editore, Archbishop of the Prime of All Nigeria, and called All Saints Church. And whereas on Sunday, 26th of November 1989, we witnessed the consecration of Reverend Hannah Peter Jasper Hiller, provincial missioner as Bishop of Abuja, the inauguration of the Diocese of Abuja and the installation and enthronement of the right Reverend Peter Jasper Hiller as Bishop of the Diocese of Abuja. And whereas by divine providence, Continuing and intensity of evangelical activities by the church resulted in both spiritual and numerical growth of the church, requiring improvement and expansion of the church structures and facilities. And where does it raise the most Reverend Nicholas D. Oko, Archbishop of Metropolitan and former Primate of all Nigeria, gave consent to divinely inspired for the rebuilding of the church on the same site. With a new design concept necessitating the identification of an alternative temporary place of worship. And whereas the church remodeled the existing Sunday school hall on the same premises as a temporary place of worship, and the structure was dedicated on Friday, September 13, 2019, by His Grace, Most Reverend Nicholas D. Oko, the Archbishop of Metropolitan and former private of Nigeria. Whereas the renovation work of the church building with offices commenced on September 26, 2019, after all the necessary approvals were obtained from the Department of Development Control of the Federal Capital Development Authority, and whereas the church has now been built by the efforts and sacrificial giving of members of the church for the worship of the Almighty God, the proclamation of the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice and the activities of 
according to the rights and the doctrine of the Church of Nigeria and the Union. Whereas the Church is completely free from financial and other liabilities. The prayer of the Vicar of the Church, the Venerable Ernest Kishuku Oluwa, on behalf of the worshiping congregation, has appealed to us to dedicate to said church, and whereas it is our pleasure and privilege so to do.
the vicar of the Old Saints Church, Mr. Abuja, the Venerable Ernest Onoha and his wife, Mrs. Chioma Onoha, the representatives of the federal government present here today, the secretary to the government of the Federation, Mr. Box Mustafa, the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Mr. Sunday Gary, the head of the civil service of the Federation, Dr. Mrs. Olasha de Yemiyeton, my Lord Bishop Spreader, my Lord Semperon, the clergy and congregation of the All Saints Anglican Church, we say. It is my very special privilege to congratulate you on behalf of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the Government of Nigeria on the dedication of this new church auditorium of the All Saints Anglican Church, we say. This is a historic parish, a governing parish, being the first parish of the Anglican Communion to be established in the federal capital territory 35 years ago. And we are told that in these three and a half decades, it has birthed a new cathedral, several dioceses, and hundreds of other parishes. We are all we are all extremely proud as we behold this breathtaking architectural achievement and the tasteful finishing of a state of art of a state of the art facility. And we thank God for enabling its completion because but for his provision and, for, and his mercies, this would have been impossible. Indeed, unless the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain to build it. But we are spiritual people. So we know that there is more here today. We know that this is not just about dedicating a majestic church auditorium. It is first about honoring God. The building of a great edifice as a place of worship is an important statement to God that we will give our best to him as a testimony of our worship. Second, every church that is built is an important vehicle for the spread of the gospel. Evangelism is crucial, but there must be a place to disciple the saints, to disciple those who are saved, which is why many agree that church planting is the most effective form of evangelism. Third, every church is a lighthouse, a place that draws in men and women to be instructed in the truth that is able to deliver from fear, from oppression and eternal damnation. A place of suffering for thousands, a place of joy and praise, a place of encouragement, which is why the psalmist said, and it goes, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So we must continue to build churches, to build these places of worship, knowing that everywhere we plant a church, we establish the light and power of the gospel, and that this gospel of the love of Jesus Christ for all men and women is the answer to the darkness, the pain and misery of our world. So I rejoice with you today, not merely because you have built a church, but because of the benefits that must now accrue to you for building this church. By honoring God, the result is that God will honor you. From the time of David, David did not build a church. He thought about building a church. And the Lord blessed his generation forever. You have not only thought of building a church, you have built a church. So that the wonders and the miracles of God will attend to you and your families forevermore in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. By contributing to the propagation of the gospel, you qualify. 
for eternal rewards. But the dedication of the physical building called the church must only remind us that the real work of building the church is that of building up men and women in the knowledge and nurture of the Lord. It is equipping the saints to lead victorious lives here on earth and to show others the way, the truth, and the light. That task is more urgent now than ever before. The forces of evil, of hate, are more vehement than ever. The battle between light and darkness is more intense than ever. But the church will prevail. Amen. Indeed, as the Lord himself assures us, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Let me on behalf then again of our government congratulate the Primate of all Nigeria and Archbishop of the Abuja Diocese, Archbishop Napolitan, today and all members of the clergy who are present here, of the Anglican Communion and all members of this great church. And I pray in the words of Solomon, as he dedicated the great temple in 2 Chronicles 6, verse 14. Now, my God, I pray, let your eyes be open, let your ears be attentive to all of the prayers that are said in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Osibajo, SAN, GCUN, <laughs> Vice President of Nigeria, Our Bishops, here present, the Chancellor of the Church of Nigeria, the Registrar, Abuja Diocese, and all of us, praise ye the Lord. The Lord Standing here and looking at this edifice, it gives me great joy that one is alive to share in his glory. I want to congratulate our brother, the chairman of the building committee and members of the building committee, the PCC of this church, and all who are supported from outside to make it the reality today. We are aware of the labors of our heroes past. The part of Papa Akiola and others have been mentioned. May God receive the glory. <laughs> Quickly, I congratulate you for certain reasons, members of All Saints Church, that you engage in the building of this edifice without disagreement and quarreling. <laughs> Most of the time, we have very big projects and good activities, but the enemy is to get spirit of strife and the work is pulled down. But this was started, continued, and brought to this level by the grace of God, with friendship and unity of purpose. Secondly, it was achieved 
at a time in our country when things were very difficult economically, and you are able to sacrifice and carry out this job. Congratulations. Again, architecture, buildings, they are fashionable things. If you go to the buildings of the colonial period, they are no longer of our generation. So even spiritual houses are also fashionable places. So I believe that the fashion that you have in this church building will last for the next 30 years, 50 years and so So we thank God. Like the vice president said, the cement, the blocks, the iron and so on, they are all one, one side of building. Building the church from one side, the concrete, the physical. The remaining is, which is more difficult, the building of the people for eternity. And that is the work of the primate and his team to ensure that this place continues to have men and women who are spiritually sound to promote the spiritual life of the people, preparing them for the greater church above. So on this note, I rejoice with members of all saints and congratulate the primate, the vicar, the building committee, and every one of us. Thank you very much. Agenda. 
vision be upheld, sustained, and cherished. Because that is the beauty of all saints' church. In fact, the church is both for the saints' militants as well as the saints' triumphant. It is also to be a house of prayer where people come and express their desire to God in prayer faithfully and courageously. It is not a place of tribal or static politics which can ruin or hinder the true worship of God. We would like to let you know that all in church has a milestone in our life. It was in all things that I was elected as bishop. It was in all things that I was elected as archbishop. And subsequently, it was in all things that I was elected primate. All Saints Church was the first Anglican church established in what is now known today as FCT. We sincerely express our apology for not being around physically. This is due to the present situation in the country. We however greatly appreciate the church for the actual be they sent to me. <laughs> Once again, congratulations for the dedication of the new All Saints Church House of Prayer. Thanks and God bless. The most pleasant Peter, just as
Lord Endue, the Vice President, and the Secretary to the Federal Government, and all who serve in the Federal Executive Council, grant them the wisdom from above. Amen. And when they speak, grant them utterance that comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fill their heart with wisdom Amen. and give them calmness of mind. Amen. That being filled and led by you, O Holy Spirit, they will fulfill their purpose. Amen. And in this government, Lord, may your name be glorified. Amen. Whatever has borne a stumbling block or a hindrance to the fulfillment of your purpose in this nation and land, Lord, bring to naught in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Arise, O oh Lord, in your power, O oh, sovereign Lord, and reign over us and this nation. This we pray. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And to God's gracious keeping and mighty protection and care, we commit you and all yours. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord keep you. Amen. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you Amen. and be gracious unto you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you Amen. and give you his peace Amen. and guide you by his wisdom Amen. and may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, Amen. the Son, and the Holy Spirit Amen. rest upon you, your family, and your work done in his name, now and always. Amen. Amen.
the New Testament lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning at verse 7. So then, never he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's spirit. You are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me at the fight to master builder, I have made the foundation. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will be clear because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on, on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burnt, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet so as in fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defies the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you have. This is the word of the Lord.
to all sincere children who touch at the points of our needs. Speak to every soul and spirit present in the face of children. We thank you. Every power of the enemy will subject them to the years of Christ. We release the power in your name and in your word. Lord, meet us. He us. Resort us. And push us. Your children. In the name of God the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. From the beginning to Haggai. Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. I read from verse 6 to 9. Haggai 2, 6 to 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more it is a little one. I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple. With glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace. Says the Lord of hosts. Amen. Amen. The word of our meditation is the greater glory of God. The greater glory of God. Amen. All saints. American church will say is the credo of the Diocese of Abuja. By its membership, it is a microcosmos of Nigeria and what a church should be a home for everybody, no matter where you are coming from. No matter your tribe or background. This education is the, the, this education of this reviewed church has offered us an opportunity of reunion, a time to celebrate God's faithfulness and to celebrate the service of God's people both in the time past and in the present. Indeed, it represents the continual nature of the work of the ministry of the gospel. As we read in our New Testament reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul said, I planted and Apollos water. And each minister or servant of God serves according to the enablement that God has given him. And everyone shall be rewarded, and everyone's work shall also be tested. And as we look at what is happening today, we can see Indeed, as Jesus said in John chapter 4, from verse 36 to 38, that he has sent us to gather to harvest in the field where we have not labored, to gather fruit for eternal life, so that 
both the one that sows and the one who reaps may rejoice together. For in this, the saying is true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to read that which you have not leveled. Others have leveled and you have entered into the other side. As I thought and pondered on what we are celebrating today, I can see the hand of God guiding the church from one stage to another. From the time of Baba Yoma to the time of Baba Oko, and for also be the ones that will rededicate this place. I want to hear when you started. The work has gone far. But today we see myself as the one taking the glory. No, it is not. It is a continuation of what God has given to the church to do. We thank God for those who built the first tabernacle. We thank God for the enormous work that has gone in that. In fact, there was no year you come and there was no addition or subtraction. But it is good that you have made up your mind to make a complete makeover and review. We give thanks and praise God Almighty and also every member of this church and our friends and all God's people for their sacrifice that has accomplished this task. Your prayers, money, skill, time, and level, both physical and spiritual. God, the righteous rewarder, will bless you all with generational blessings in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the pressures and demands of our time often make us to throw away the things that matter with God. How can where we do our text. Prophesied and ministered when Israel came back from Ezra in 538 BC. Following the decree of Emperor Cyrus, who decreed the return and the, of the Israelites and the rebuilding of the Temple of Jerusalem. The exile who returned with Zerubbabel, Joshua, and others, started the work. They were excited, but along the line, they got distracted by their own personal needs and concerns. And in fact, at the point, they started saying it was not time for them to continue the building of the temple. But because they neglected the things of God, God also brought the situation of judgment upon them. The prophet said, you gather much, but you only have little. You gather, you put in your pocket, and lo, behold, it was a strong pocket. And God raised Haggai to stir up the hearts of the people, the governor, the priests and the people. God said their hearts that they may continue in the work. Why should they do this? Because this was God's priority. And I can hear Haggai saying, put God first. Follow his leading and he will be glorified and he will take care of their own needs. Brethren, our values and our priorities are demonstrated in the way we use our resources, in the way we use our time, our money, our skills, and our strength, and especially in 
speaking at any time. All saints church will say, in the name of God, and on behalf of this church of Nigeria, we say thank you. Thank you for choosing to honor God in spite of the challenges of our time. Security, economy, and all of us. It came. I thank God for the gloomy message of Kaboko. It came by your focus, your unity of purpose, and by your sacrifice. Because you have put God text, God will glorify himself among you. And he will hear your own bodies. He will rebuke the devil on your behalf. And God will bless you beyond measure. He is so gentle to any man. And he says, he that honors me, he also I will honor. Brothers and sisters, you are fashioned, you are positioned for greater glory. Amen. 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 You are positioned by this act of faith. God is positioning you for greater glory than the most Jesus. When we talk of glory, it has to do with beauty, splendor, and radiance, which we see manifested. And in fact, when we look at what God has enabled you to do, we will see the manifestation of majesty. Of beauty. Even in this view. In fact, it is pointing us to what God will do and where God is taking not only the church of God, but this nation. We are speaking from the heart of the standard of power of this nation that Nigeria's future will be better. That this house in the name of Jesus Christ. If God has enabled us to do this at such a challenging time as this, God is taking us to a better future. When we talk of glory, especially as we see in our text, in fact, we see there that verse 9. Talks of this glory of God. He says that the glory of this letter, temple, shall be greater than the former. When God talks of this glory, it is what the Old Testament use the word to help. The New Testament uses the word Dosa. It has to do with beauty and in fact with radiance of power. As you look around, you see the box around us. When the switch is off, the box will look ordinary. But when you switch on, the power. There is a radiance not only looks beautiful, but it gives light. That is what glory is. Whenever God manifests, there is a radiance of power. There is light. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And anyone who follows after me shall never walk in the darkness of this world. It is the radiance of strength. It is dignity. Ultimately, glory belongs to God because it is the attribute. It is the character of God. As he says, be thou holy as I, the Lord your God, I am holy. But these can also be used 
for the things that are associated with God. Glory of the temple of God, the glory of the name of the Lord, the glory and dignity even of his garments that the priests put on. And as God spoke to Moses in Exodus chapter 28 verse 2, he says, make holy garments for Aaron your brother. It shall be for glory and uh, beauty. For glory and dignity. When we worship God, it must be in the spirit and in truth. But also in the beauty of His holiness and in utter most reverence. It must be with our heart, it must be with our mind, it must be with our strength, and everything around us must be yielded to God. And I believe that this is what this sanctuary stands for. Greater glory of God. I would want us to consider four subtopics. First is the sovereignty of God. Secondly, the shaping of our time. And thirdly, the shaping of mission of nations, which has to do with the mission of the church. And finally, the glory of the latter temple. The sovereignty of God. Power and excellence belong to God alone. And in fact, as we see from uh, First Chronicles chapter 29, when David offered unto God for the building of his, of his temple, and gathered Israel that they may offer to God, when they had given gold for the things of gold and silver for the things of silver and the precious stones, he lifted up his heart and hands unto God and said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel our God, forever and ever. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all things that is in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom. O oh Lord, and you are exalted and saved over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Amen. Amen. Excellency belongs to God. One song has spoken and twice we have heard that excellence of power belongs unto the Lord our God. And so let us honor him and worship and reverence him. Let us bow in reverence and serve him. And in fact, from the 6th to 9th of Haggai chapter 2 where we read, Every verse made mention of the Lord of hosts, the God who is in charge and command of the armies of heaven. He has power to live, he has power to bring down, to give life or to death. The power to change and what seems impossible with man, with God, all things are possible. This is our God. But how can I say, the house of man says, Aja, Aja, say, Allah, baby, Shabbat. If Allah, Ya, Shia, Madara, Shabbat. That is, we are putting and we are putting it because God has not come in. When God steps into any matter, into any life, into any family, into any situation, when we surrender to tell you to him, he says, matter is there.
from verse 7. He says, So we are for you to get new everlasting doors and the kingdom of new everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your hands so you get. Lift up you everlasting gods. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. I pray that every door will be lifted. Every heart will be open. Every family will be open. Every talk will be open. And this nation, the gates of this nation, be lifted by Jesus will come in. Some of the Lord, in whose hand belongs authority and power. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this new church belongs to God. No matter what you have given, no matter what you have built, no matter what you have done, no matter how much you have slept in this church, from today, it is offered back to God as a sacrifice. And I haven't said for the who offers sacrifice, I'm going to and go to take it back. It is not done. So, you have given it, you have done it, watch what God will do. We are not here to praise anybody, we are here to appreciate God, and we are here to thank you, and celebrate what you have done. Amen. Amen. May God remember you. Amen. And as such, when we gather here, let us know that this church, this sanctuary, is the palace of the living God. Is the house of God and not the house of man. Amen. Amen. This sanctuary represents for us the presence of God. In Exodus 25, in verses 8 and 9, 
All things you have done well. Giving, you have given your gold for the things of gold, silver for the things of silver. You have given your precious stone, you have given your time and your talent and skill to raise these enemies. That's why that's why Chronicles 29 demands and he says, Who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord? This means who is willing to say, Lord, do something new in my life? Lord, start afresh with me. As Revelation 21, verse 5 says, See that things upon the cross says, Behold, I make all things new. God wants to make a fresh start for somebody. Will that person say, Lord, here I am? God, help me. Who will consecrate himself? Beyond your money, God asks your heart, your life. Beyond your pain, beyond your time, God is saying, will you, for the mercy of God, surrender, present your body, your soul, your spirit, as a living sacrifice of the God. Today, as we raise this new order, God is demanding for sacrifice, consecration, sanctification, purging of the Holy Spirit and His Word. And as we talk to Him in faith, may He turn to us, may He answer us. Brothers and sisters, God is asking that are we ready to receive from him the spirit of wisdom and revelation? Are we ready to ask for deeper understanding, enlightenment, that we may know the hope of our calling, that we may follow him with all our hearts, that we may know the riches of the glory of his inheritance with all the saints. And as we come unto him in this consecration, and dedication. May we receive favor. May our hearts be torn to the greater glory that shall be revealed when Jesus shall come in his majesty. Think beyond this life. It is difficult to us to live and die at once. But after that comes the judgment of God. The question is, where will you spend this time? But thank God that this is a preparation for eternity. Amen. Amen. The greater glory is coming. The greater glory is coming. When our tears will be wiped away. When God will comfort us. And as we go from here, may we look up with hope for the appearance of the Lord of this church, and they will worship with fear, awe, and reverence. May this church and this diocese and indeed the church of God be built on what the reformers said as their principle: so that secular, so that today, so that Russia, so loose, Christus, so need. Your glory. Strict to only may our lives be built upon the word of God. May we walk by faith alone. May we depend upon the grace of God alone. May Jesus only be all that matter for us. And may all be for the glory of God. May we continually experience the greater glory of God. As we behold him with open faces and be changed and be transformed from glory to glory, as we allow him to have his way in our lives. Who will be willing to consecrate himself to the Lord today? Bow your head and go down soon.
God, your word has come forth. Let your spirit and life over us. As we dedicate this sanctuary to you, Lord, release the fresh glory upon our lives for the honor of your holy name and the blessing of your church. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
doxology. As we pray, we give you hearty thanks, Heavenly Father, for your presence and guidance in this worship service. We worship and glorify your holy name and grant to Lord that the word which we have heard with our outward ears will by your grace be grafted in our hearts and cause us that we may bring forth fruit that will glorify you. And finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life. We thank you for all our friends and our guests who have come to rejoice with us. For all the clergy and laity of this diocese, for the PCC and the vicar of this church, and the team of pastors, the architect and project uh, supervisor, the chairman of the planning committee, and the chairman of the building committee, and all the subcommittees and the people you have used, all who have given to support this work. Lord, as Nehemiah prayed that you remember him, Lord, also remember these ones. Visit and bless them beyond our imagination and understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. We bring before you our sister, Princess Ruth Atanyero, as she celebrates a new year in her life this day. Lord, beautify her with long life. Grant her good health. And in all things, may your name be glorified in, his, in her life. And God bless all that concern her. Father, we ask that you look upon us as we go forth from here. O oh, most glorious God, whom the heaven of heavens cannot contain, graciously accept the dedication of this place to your service and Grant that all who shall call upon you here may worship you in spirit and in truth and may in their lives show forth your praise. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the Lord in his great mercy bless you and give you understanding of his wisdom and grace. May he nourish you with the riches of the Catholic faith and make you to persevere in all good works. And may he keep your, feet, your steps from wandering and direct you into the paths of love and of peace. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you, your family, and your work done in his name now and always.
Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Our recessional hymn is on page 25. We shall recess and process out in reverse order. <laughs> 